Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video we're going to go over Jackson Pratt drains, also called JP drains for short. In this video I want to give you a comprehensive overview what you can expect from a JP drain whenever you're taking care of one as a nurse. And this is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to go over what a JP drain is, I'm going to show you one, go over all of its parts with you, how to care for one as a nurse, which will include emptying it, um, milking it, how to keep it secure and assessing the site. I'm also going to talk about how you should document whenever you're taking care of one and talk to you about the potential complications you may experience with one and how to troubleshoot one. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to show you a picture. Here in a second a picture is going to pop up and it's a picture of three JP drains. What you're going to see is you're going to see a little hand grenade JP drain. That's what we call them us nurses because they look like a little hand grenade. Um, it'll be in the front and then behind it will be a larger hand grenade a JP drain and then over to the side will be it looks a little bit like an accordion. It has little springs in it and you squish it down and that will be over on your left. So let's take a look at those. Okay, now that you've seen what JP drains look like in the hospital setting, what you'll actually encounter, let me show you this drawing that I've drawn of a little hand grenade one that you will see in the hospital. Technically, this is the most commonly one I've seen, and I've blown it up. This is not how big it is. I've blown it up to scale so you can see it. And I'm going to go over its, all of its little parts with you and show you how it is because it's so important. You know every little nook and cranny and every little part on a drain so you can be familiar with it. So let's zoom in and take a look at this. Okay, what you're seeing right here, this top area is the insertion part where the surgeon inserted the drain. These JP drains are most commonly found on patients who've had, who've had thoracic surgeries or um, abdominal surgeries. And they'll insert the drain inside the womb and this will drain all the drainage that's collected in the surgical wound out because you don't want this drainage setting inside the surgical site. And it will drain down into this bulb. So how does it drain down into the bulb? What causes it to drain down in the bulb is that this part right here, you compress it. And whenever you compress it, it causes suction, which will suck all this stuff out. And as all this drainage is coming down through the tube, it will collect in this collection area right here and it will expand the bulb out. And once it's expanded out, it won't suck any more drainage and you'll have to empty it. And a lot of times you want to empty this whenever it's halfway full. So this is a 100 cc collection chamber, so you'd want to empty it whenever it hits about the 50 cc. So how do you empty it? You have on this area a removable cap with a port. So this area comes off of just like a little pop off cap and it'll stay once you pop it off. And there's a port and you just turn it upside down and squeeze it into a measuring cup to get your drainage. And it's easy because you can measure it. And then right here, sometimes physicians will have an order for you to remove one or the physician will do it themselves. But there's usually two to three little black sutures here that you'd have to get a little suture kit and remove those. And after you remove the sutures, the drain literally just slides out, it'll glide out. I don't know if you've ever removed a Foley catheter or a pick line or anything like that, but that's how gentle it comes out whenever you do that. Now let's go over all the technical details about a JP drain and how you provide care to it and document the potential complications. Okay, there's many different types of drains and usually you have open system drains and you have closed system drains. A JP drain is a closed system drain that uses bulb suction. Remember, you compress the bulb and it prevents all that drainage from where the surgeon operated from pulling around that surgical site and it collects it just nicely down in this bulb. Now what's the benefits of a closed system drain compared to an open system drain? An open system drain, just to give you an example, is like a Penrose drain and I'll be going over that a little bit later. But what happens is whenever you have a Penrose drain, you have this drain sticking out of the surgical wound and you just have this dressing around it and it just collects around that, which increases the chance of infection and you can't really measure that drainage very well. So a JP drain allows you to keep track of your drainage 
and decreases the risk of infection because it's not just pulling around the wound. So that's the benefits of a closed system drain. So how do you care for a JP drain as a nurse? Now there's hospital protocols that each facility has. They may require little technical details a little bit differently. So always check what the place you're working for before you mess with a JP drain if you're not familiar with it. But this is generally what you're gonna be doing to it as a nurse. Okay, first, emptying it. This is so important. Okay, you want to empty this drain whenever it's halfway full. This is usually about one to two times a day. And um, what you do after you empty it, you'll record it. This is so important because a lot of surgeons are going to ask you, hey, how much is that JP drain putting out? And you'll tell them or they can easily look on a flow sheet in the computer, but usually they ask you because that's the easiest thing for them to do is ask you and you'll have to know. And they will usually discontinue these drains if they've put out less than 30 cc's in a 24 hour period. So it's very important you're documenting and measuring this accurately. So what type of drainage can you expect in these drains? Typically, if it's a fresh drain that's put in, they're coming to you post-op, they've literally had surgery just 24 hours ago, you're going to be seeing bloody drainage, which is called serosanguinous fluid. It's going to be serous fluid mixed with blood. Then as the wound starts to heal, it's going to go to light pink, then to light yellow, then to clear. Now, what's not normal? What type of drainage do you need to watch out for? Typically, whenever you start having cloudy yellow or a tan color, maybe even sometimes green, and it has a really bad odor, this is high indication that there is an infection going on. And if that was the case, you want to immediately let the surgeon know that, hey, you found this and it might be an infection. So how do you empty a drain? Let's go over it one more time because I think you can never go over things too much, especially if you're new to it. So let's talk about how you empty it again. So you have your little grenade and um, like I said, you empty it when it's halfway full or whatever your hospital says, one to two times. And what you do is you take your little cap off, you pop it off. Um, the bulb will inflate if it's not already inflated. And then you'll pour the contents out into a measuring cup. A lot of hospitals have these clear little measuring cups that have little numbers on the side that say one cc, two cc's. I really recommend that you pour those in there to measure properly. And then dispose of it. Usually you can just flush it down the toilet, but if your um, hospital has a protocol for that, if they're in contact or has some type of MRSA or something in it, they may require that you do something different with it. But generally you can just flush it down the toilet. And then, You'll want to clean this little plug area that you popped off with just some alcohol prep because you want to decrease infection. So after you pop it off, just clean it and then pop it back on. And then before you pop it back on though, compress your bulb so you can have suction going back in. So clean the little plug, compress it. It'll look like a little donut that a little hole will form from where it's been compressed so much. And then put your plug back on and then it's ready to go. They're really simple and easy to take care of. It's one of my favorite drains. Now let's talk about milking the drain. What is that exactly? Okay, milking a drain, what it does is it helps prevent clots from forming in this little tubing section right here. Because if this tubing section, because you know how it's draining drainage from this insertion site, which has blood in it, blood clots, because it has clotting cells in it, this little tubing site can get clotted. Now, what does it look like whenever you have a potential clot? You'll see some like dark stringy areas inside the tubing. That's a good indication, hey, some clots are wanting to form. So milking the tubing allows you to prevent this from happening, because if this happens, you'll notice that um, all of a sudden you won't get as much drainage or Sometimes there's a dressing around this insertion site. It'll become saturated, things like that. So how do you actually milk the tubing? What you want to do is you want to take one of your hands, fingers with your thumb and your finger, and you want to just hold it up at where the insertion site is. This is keeping it secure. Then you're going to take your other finger and you're just going to, your thumb and your index finger, and you're just going to gently just compress it down into the compress into the collection chamber. So in a sense, you're just taking the tubing and you're just sort of squeezing it down and just stripping it in a sense down into the collection chamber to get all that fluid and stuff out of there so it doesn't form a clot. 
Now, a lot of hospital protocols will order you to do this every four hours. So always document that you're milking the tubing and that you've been doing this just in case something happens and someone can't come back and say, hey, you weren't milking the tubing per protocol. That's why you got a clot. So always document that. And like I said, the clots will appear dark, red, and stringy. Now, okay, another thing, just some side notes. You want to keep this drain secure, especially if your patient's up moving. A lot of times after surgery, if it wasn't a huge major surgery where they can't get up and be mobile, we want the patients up and moving. And a lot of times these uh, little um, JP drains will have collect little secure tags on them and you can put a safety pin and pin it to their gown. A lot of times that some hospitals may carry this. I don't know if your hospital will, but um, I don't know if you're familiar with what the Foley catheter secure device looks like. It's like a little tagoderm and it has a little Velcro part and you can just put it around the tubing, just keeps it in place. There's things similar to that. And you always, whenever you do secure it, don't take the drain and secure it up at the top because it's not gonna drain. You wanna keep it below the insertion site so gravity and the bulb section, suction can work together and pull that down. So keep it secure because you don't want it to be pulled out. Even though these sutures will help keep that in place, sometimes those sutures like to wear out and the drain will slip out, which won't be good. And next, You'll want to always assess what the assert, what the insertion site looks like around the drain. Very important. So right here, there's the insertion site, and you want to look at that skin around it. What you're looking for is any signs of infection. And if there's a dressing around there, always make sure you're keeping it dry and you're changing it regularly. Because if you keep a dressing in place and it's wet, that increases the chances of infection. So signs of infection would be the area is red, it's warm, it's tender to the patient. It could also feel hard or it could um, have swelling. So make sure you look for that. Now let's talk about documenting. A lot of times your hospital will have a flow sheet that you will use to document about your JP drains, but sometimes you don't. So you could either um, write this in a progress note using the format that your hospital wants or um, document it wherever you're supposed to document it. And you'll want to include that you emptied it, what, it, what the drainage looked like that you emptied, how much it was, if you performed milking or not, um, what the insertion site looked like, and if you secured the drain or not. So those are some important things you want to record. Now let's talk about potential complications. Some potential complications you have to watch out for are the following. Typically clot formation, like I discussed earlier. And usually what will happen is if you suspect clot formation is that you will notice that there will be no drainage in the bulb or you will see a abrupt decrease in drainage or the drainage will be around the insertion site instead of the bulb. Now, if this happens and, you're mil and you milk the tubing and that didn't work, then you'll want to notify the doctor. Next, the catheter falls out. Remember the little tubing area? This, in this extends into the wound. Sometimes what happens is those little sutures, they work their way off and it can slip out. And if this happens, of course, you'll wanna notify the doctor immediately and just place a bandage over the area just to keep it free from any um, infections or anything like that until you get further orders on what to do. And then lastly, sometimes what you might have happen is that whenever you say you empty the bulb or you notice you go in to assess your patient, the bulb's in inflated and you're gonna go compress it because maybe the previous person forgot to and compress it and the bulb won't compress. Usually what's happened is that there's a clot that has formed or the catheter has become dislodged. And if this happens, of course, you'll wanna notify the doctor and see what he wants to do about it. So that is an overview about JP drains, what you'll have to know as a nurse. I hope this helped increase your knowledge and you can take it back to clinical practice and um, put it to use. And thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out my other videos on nursing skills and have a great day.